welcome all of you to our meeting today. I'll let my wife say a word of hello. Good evening, everyone. It's great to see us today to be together as we continue learning. I just really like the topic today, helping our children to develop a relationship with God. And so I'm really looking forward to learning today. Karibuni sana. Sante. So uh, today we are going to have a awesome. special uh, guest also speaking to us. Uh, they are a wonderful couple uh, leading uh, the church in Dar es Salaam. Uh, two wonderful children who have grown up. Uh, they are not the admin, as you can see from the, from the box, <laughs> but these are none other than uh, Joachim and Eva Palanjo. Mm. Uh, they will be sharing with us uh, from the word of God. Uh, as we get to, like my wife has said, uh, talk about spirituality based on how you can help your children uh, to develop a relationship with God. That's our all desire. And uh, so let's all be our ears to them. Uh, just have a great time together as we get to learn. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, Joachim and Eva, uh, stage is yours. Karibuni sana. Asante sana. Habari za gioni. Tuko salama, tuko wazima. We want to take this opportunity to just to thank all of you, the facilitators for giving us this opportunity to be able to share with you tonight. And uh, we are super grateful. And we also want to thank those who have gone ahead of us to share powerful classes with us. When we were told to share, we were like, man, people have gone ahead of us that have shared powerful next classes. And what are we going really to share about? So this is a powerful forum, great people and all that. But we do pray that uh, the Holy Spirit will be able to guide us and lead us. Habari za jioni wazazi. Na tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya nafasi hii. Tunashukuru kwamba wote tuko pamoja tukijifunza kuhusu madhezi ya watoto. Hakuna ambao wamehitimu. Tunaendelea kujifunza wakati tunafundisha. Kwa hiyo ni matumaini yangu kwamba roho wa Mungu na Mungu mwenyewe atatusaidia tuweze kufanya kazi ambayo uh, we are blessed with the two sons. The first one is 19 years old. He's studying the Bible right now. Kindly keep praying for him. And the second one is 16 years old. He's a candidate from four candidates. He'll be doing the exams next month from 14th. And uh, the, the, the topic we are going to share today is a high calling one. We are not going to share because we are perfect, we are good, but uh, we are just sharing because of God's grace. And we pray that we, all, we are all learning. No one is perfect, no one is a great parent here, but uh, we are all learning by the grace of God. Okay, we are talking about spirituality and how to help our children to develop a relationship with uh, with God. And uh, one thing that I've realized as, as a parent is uh, for us to be able to help our children to, to develop a relationship with God, first of all, they must understand, or they must know who God is. And how are they going to learn? They have to see it in us, how we live, not about, not so much about how we live, we teach, but how do we live by what we are reading from the word of God? Because uh, sometimes, not sometimes, we know a lot about what the Bible says, but to put into practice sometimes can be very challenging. So number one, for children to be able to learn, they have to see God in our lives, you know? And uh, becoming a parent is uh, relatively easy. It doesn't require any prior education or license or any qualifications. But another thing is there is a huge difference between becoming a parent and successfully parenting the child we have brought into the world. You know, that is a yes, but I'm why helping them to have a relationship with God. We want, I would like us to read a scripture from the book of Timothy, chapter 3, from 14 to 17. It says, uh, but for you, Continuing what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you have learned it and how from infants 
I try to underline the word from infants. We see that uh, this man, the, the mother and grandmother, they did a wonderful job. And when did, they, when did they start? They started while this guy was very young, from infants. You have known the old scriptures which are able to make him wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And to go on, one old scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped. But we've seen that uh, the grandmother of Timoth and, uh, and, and his mother started while he was very young, so that when Paul met this guy, even when you read the book of Acts chapter 16, you see people were speaking well of him. And now we did begin by his mother teaching while he was still very, very, very young. So when we, as we do this, number one, we have to help our children by teaching them and training them. Okay, and uh, here it says many families have left the teaching of the Bible truth of children's schools and Sunday schools, but there is no better place for children to learn the truth of the gospel than at home for those who love them. The valuable thing Timothy inherited from his family was the gospel. Timothy became a Christian not because someone from outside preached a powerful message or someone, but because his mother and his grandmother taught him the whole scriptures when he was a small child. We read that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, who has uh, who have ch small children, let's start early. Amen. Many families have left the teachings of the Bible truths of children's schools and Sunday schools, but there is no better place for children to learn the truth, the truth of the gospel than at home. For those who have who love them, the valuable thing Timothy inherited from his family was the gospel. We should not wait. Let's start at home. When we bring our children to school or we bring our children to church, they are there for a few hours. You know, but the rest of the week we are with them. The issue of teaching and training, it has to be part of our, our daily jobs as parents. You need to be there for them, teaching them while they are very young, because they grow knowing the things of God at a very early age. He must become a Christian as my wife has read this, not because someone had a powerful message on him. No, he saw from his mother and grandmother, you know, from the scriptures. He was taught while he was very young. So that's the work of us as, as parents that uh, we need to be doing with our children. A parent's work is vital at home and in church. We should realize that teaching small children is both an opportunity and responsibility. Like a Timos, Timos's mother and grandmother, do you are part in you need to develop a relationship with it is, a, it is my responsibility. As parents, it's our responsibility to help these children develop a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. It is so much easier to start when they are young. Mm -hmm. Statistics show that people are more likely to accept Christ when they are young. By age nine, most children have their spiritual roots in place, and by the age of 13, their spiritual identity is in place. Okay? The older a person gets, the more difficult it is for him or her to replace existing moral and spiritual beliefs. I like what Muslims are doing. And by the way, I don't know with other the, the, the religion that is growing so fast is Islamic. Why Islam? Why? These people, one thing they really do, they make sure that their, their children are taught to one. They memorize that thing, you know? They make sure when they are like five years, four years, they know all the five pillars of the Islam. They know it, they sing it, they memorize. Sometimes they are, they are even rewarded. But as Christians, sometimes we don't see that, that it is an opportunity as parents, whereby we teach this. When they are very young and know that they need to know this book, while they are, while they are very young, they grow with it. By the time they are old, they, they, no one can teach them because they believe this. 
you know, they are into it and they know it and they love it. It is part of their life. Right. Something else I want us to, to understand to see is uh, how does God view our children? How does God, God view children? Okay. Mark chapter 10, 13 to 16. This is Jesus. People are bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked him, them. When Jesus was saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Now, look at the disciples of Jesus. These guys were like, you know what? Why are you wasting time with kids, surely? We are here to make disciples. We need to go and preach the gospel. Let's go to the serious matters. These kids, just leave, let them play. Let, let them do what they are, they are doing. They, they, continue, they move on with life. But Jesus was indignant. Why? Because kids were special. He said the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. The kingdom of heaven. You, you may look at them like, I want to talk to them. I want to talk to them. I want to look at But Jesus, these are very special. He treasured them. He valued them. Let them come to me. He blessed them. He, hold, he, he held them. You know? That's how God God views children. You know, if every parent, if we view our children the way Jesus viewed them, all God, man, will have a special time with them because, you know, they are so special before God. Think about that. The kingdom of God is, is for them. Sometimes we may feel like, I want to talk to you, just let them, our eleven children, our children, but to Jesus, man, he stopped. He was busy with the ministry, but he did not even know them. Yeah. How many times we know children? We are not teaching them, ah, ah, watch on us, what to have. But Jesus, man, let them come to me. Jesus is God 100%, but he stopped. Hey, hey, let them come here. And he was indignant the disciples. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I love the children. They are very special to me. How does the, the parents view children? Okay? How does parents view children? When we read Psalms 127, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guys stand in vain. In vain, you raise early and stay up late, toiling for food. Each the grand slave to those who he loves. Children are heritage from the Lord, offspring reward from him. Like the arrows in the hand of our warrior are children born in one school. Blessed the man whose fever is full of them. They will not be put to shame them when they contend with their opponents in court. Okay, this is this is Solomon speaking. And uh, the priority Solomon wants us to have is clear in this um which describes God's blessing on our home and yet begins with our own. A heritage is an inheritance or a gift, something we do not earn, but receive from the hand of a generous giver. Children are gifts from God. I don't think that every parent understands that children are gifts from God. You know what? Not the burdens to weigh us down, all on our way to the top, or even less. The inevitable byproducts of that. They are not a byproduct. They are not there to weigh us down. Whatever. Ah, you may talk about one and church and admiration and all that. No, these are gifts from God. Gifts are to be received with gratitude and cherished. Cherished since every good, perfect gift comes from God. James one seventeen. You know that. Imagine a reward from God. Can you imagine if God is going to give us a gift? How are you going to receive it? Many people have different rewards from sports, schools, and work. You know, maybe you want something and you are given a, a, a reward. Sometimes even Christmas, the Christmas is coming, you know, birthday and all that. People buy us car, cars and gifts. But try to imagine a reward from God. Parents should view kids or children as God views them. Okay? They should view them that way. That we should not look at our children as burdens. You know, these are gifts from God. We need to treasure them. 
we need to love them. And it is a perfect gift. These are perfect gifts from God. They are not burdens. They are not burdens. Okay, imagine a word from God. How is it received? Mm -hmm. How do I treat my children? If every parent view children as Solomon says here, I'm telling you, we, we will thank God for that. You know, they are not burdens to us. We should receive them with gratitude and cherish them as we help them to have a relationship with God. But we cannot help them to have a relationship with God if you don't value them, you know. If you don't value them, we will never help them to have a relationship with God. Children should be viewed as God sees them. It takes God to raise children. He is our foundation, our ultimate authority. Okay? It is our responsibility to point our children to God. He expects us to help them develop a relationship with Him. It's not our job to change them. We are parents, you know. We can do whatever we can, but we can never change our children. Our part is to help them, teach them, but God's part is to change them. We can threaten them and all that, you know. In Swahili, we say, you know, he's my son, he's my daughter and all that, but that does not mean that I can change them. No, God is the one who will change them as long as I help them to walk with God and to teach them, okay? And it says that every winning team in any sport measures on the fundamentals of the game. They keep going back to the best piece. They go to training, come to every time. Even if they won all the season because they never would have brought the new of the best piece. Think about the big teams in the world. For the football fans, we have teams like Real Madrid, Manchester United, Arsenal, and all that. These guys, when they win a trophy, they're not just after winning, they disappear. Okay, we will go to Portugal, you go to France, you go to Yama, and then until next season. No, these guys, they go back. They go, they train as if they have not won anything. They train. They go back to the fundamentals. They go back to the basics. You know, how did we win? Let's go back. Let's train. Train again and again. They, they buy new players. They do whatever it takes. Even if it's to, to, to hire a new coach, they'll do that. You know, us as parents, as parents, where are we going back? We need to go back to the best. And what are the, is our best? The Bible. The Bible is our ultimate authority. The Bible is our ultimate authority. We have to teach our children the Bible. And the changing part, we leave it to God. You teach, and we teach, and we teach. We go back to the Bible. We go back to the Bible. No, no, we are not tired. Don't ever say, I'm tired of teaching. I'm tired of saying this. No, 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 no. We need to go back to our best. That is the Bible. The Bible is our ultimate authority. As we are seated here this evening, you know, we have our cultures, we have our customs, we have whatever, but the Bible is our ultimate authority and we need to pass it on. To <laughs> and the, the changing part, we leave it to God. We are, we've not won. We are in the rest of helping our children to develop to develop a relationship with God. What does it take? What does it take? As parents, we must be intentional what we do with our children. If we are intentional in something, you will go for it. You will go for it. Look at your life. Let us look at our lives, things that we were intentional about. Maybe a career, maybe education and all that, maybe a business. So long as we are intentional about something, even the church and all that, we will go for it. Because there is something we want, we want to pursue, we want to achieve at the end of the day. But if we are not intentional, there's no way. You know, our goal is not to raise religious children, but children who understand the gospel. We need to help these people understand the gospel, not the religious people. You know, gospel is 
his word. Mm -hmm. He is the right thing that they should know. And how are we going to know by seeing it in our lives? When we try to make our children look good, thought roots in the gospel, we turn them into Pharisees. No, 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 no. They're going to appear to be very good. They are only manipulators. You know what? Behaving nicely does not mean they have changed in the heart. We should make sure that we we root those good characters into the gospel. Otherwise, we can be praising Pharisees without even knowing. Jesus was more concerned with the heart of the people and their actions. Jesus did not look at the outside. People should have, maybe sometimes they can appear nicely and all that, all that nice and all. But for him, he was going straight to the heart. You know, he was, he was addressing the hearts of people. And the good thing he knew the hearts. That's why he was going straight to the hearts and helping them not to be Pharisees. Okay. And um, what does it take? Time. Hard work commitment and prayer. We have to give time, make time for our children. It's not going to be easy, it's hard, but we need to be intentional to commit ourselves while we are praying and God is going to use us. There was a day we were doing some uh, Bible discussion and uh, we were like, I was asking people, uh, why do you think people should they don't read their Bible. Ah, you know, we are busy, we have no time. You know, and people, they are very okay with that excuse. And uh, one thing I told them, you know what? One thing I know, anything you love, you will have time for it. If you love football, I remember those days we used, I used to watch football, Champions League or uh, La Liga. Sometimes when Barcelona and Madrid play, they used to play from 11. Midnight, and it will take two hours. I go and look for it. Man, I watch football until two because I love it. Mm -hmm. If I love my children, I have time for them. If I love my wife, I have time for her. If I love my work, there's no excuse. I love time. And it is a hard work. We are helping them to work with God, to develop a relationship with God. It's not something simple, it's not something that is. We we'll do it in an overnight. Yeah. My, 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 my brothers and sisters, it is a hard work. Mm. It is a hard work. I'm talking as a parent, you know, what I do with them, my children, you know, my commitment, something I've, I've, I've said to my wife many times. Since my kids were in, 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 in kindergarten, mm. I wake up every morning to prepare them. Every morning. Even if I sleep at 3 a.m., I wake up at quarter to five. All day she's now in form four, is doing the exams next month. But I'll wake up preparing before you go to school. Sometimes we pray. I make sure I pray with you. It is a hard work. Sometimes it is trouble, but you know what? Because I want the best and I'm praying that God will help me. It is a hard work. It is a commitment. I have to commit myself. I have to be there. And prayer, my wife has said this. Yeah. There are people who are very good with the prayers. We live in a generation where people are like this prosperity gospel and all that. You know what? There are people who are very good with the prayers. They just pray, 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 and all that. My friend, my friends, prayers alone will not get the job done. Mm -hmm. This is goes together. We have to pray, we have to help them, we have to hold their hands. It is a hard work, it needs time, commitment, and all. We cannot just pray and pray alone. As far as we should not only grow in other responsibilities, what does that mean? We can grow in other responsibilities materially, whereby whatever they want, I'm there. But I neglect the spiritual part of it, where they, they have to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You know, it is our responsibility to take care of them. But these two, they have to go hand in hand. Satan is already winning the battle. And, and too often, we don't even realize that our children are at home. The battle in their minds started a long time ago, and we are losing it. Two areas that the devil is really fighting, marriages 
and kids. Mm. I don't know in the other countries, but my friends, the devil is really working so hard. He is really messing up with our children. The, you know, the other day I was just praying, I was just crying to God, God help us. Where will we go now? You hear the stories and it's like, now nah, what are we going to do surely? Mm -hmm. We often wait for them to become mothers. We will, then we will teach them what the Bible has to say. Only to realize it is too late to undo what has already been done. Okay? We should not waste time. The earlier we begin to teach them and train them, the better. Start when they are very young, like Timon, from infants. Even at church, let's give them something to do. Let's help them to walk with God at a very early age. Proverbs 4, verse 1 to 4. Listen to my sons, listen to my sons, to a father's instruction, pay attention and gain understanding. I hear you sound learn, so do not forsake my teaching. For I too was a son to my father. I like this. For I too was a son to my father. This is Solomon talking to his sons. You know? And he's telling them, you know what? I was my I was a son to my father as well. But I still remember. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I still remember what my father taught me. Mm -hmm. I still remember. You know, when we read this, we just sometimes go to verse 23 where it says above everything, above all. Guide your heart. But before you get there, just read from verse 1 all the way to, to the end. You will see many things. There are many warnings and all that. Verse 3, 4, 5, and 6 is about my sons, my son, my son. Emphasize, you know, whereby my son, my son. You will see that this person who was still trying to help them to walk with, to develop a relationship. Oh, I was asking myself, when I'm born and I'm old, will my children remember what I told them? Will they remember the things of God that I taught them? What will they? Will they remember the spiritual part or the other part that is not very, very, very important? The goal, sorry, sorry. The goal of spiritual parenting is to help our children to fall in love with God. But it has to start with us. They have to see it in me, excited about the, 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 the relationship with God. I enjoy walking with God. I enjoy God's work. Mm -hmm. If they see that I'm, I'm struggling, ah, I'm a Bayamungani, mm -hmm. I, I am from the minister. It's like, man, I'm if I'm not enjoying, you know, there's no way I can persuade them to do what I'm no, They will not necessarily do what I'm doing, but uh, they have to see enjoyment. I'm enjoying my work with God, you know, because God is the one who sustains us. The philosophy for our children. The goal of spiritual parenting. Life change. It's life change. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then what are the products? Disciples of Jesus. Disciples. We are making disciples of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Think about the children across East Africa. Mm -hmm. How many children do we have? If we target that all of them, the goal is to make them disciples. How many disciples are we going to have in the next five, ten years we have? The, the, the products we are making disciples of people. Mm -hmm. What is the outcome? People who love God. We need to raise people, we need to help them to love God. Okay? Mm -hmm. What are they learning? Yeah, they are learning also. Mm -hmm. We have our cultures, customs, and all that. But the most important thing, they need to learn the gospel and grow up in more and more like Jesus. Psalms 119, these are very good psalms. It says, How can a young man stay pure by living according to the word? You know, the, when the father's words matured the children, you know, there's a lot of impurities, you know, pornography. The percentage of watching pornography is very huge in our communities. These are very good sounds that we can help these kids to level just to read. You know, how can a young man keep his ways pure? The answer is right there. The Lord, the, I know it is the longest psalm and the most self structured chapter in the Bible. It celebrates the gift of God's law as the perfect guide for life. Mm -hmm. You know, the word of God will transform their hearts. And when the hearts are transformed, the life changes. The only word of God. Take them to the word of God, mm. you know. It will never be in vain. Mm. It will help us, it will help them to grow and to be more and more like Jesus. Mm. 
you know, don't, we should never get tired. We should never, never, never get tired. You may reach a point like maybe your children have grown, you know, and you feel, I started talking to them when they were still young and I've never seen any changes. Mm. My brother, my sister, don't give up. It's the same thing in the chalk car. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is something there. Yes. Yeah. Like you are still as raisi, like any to see choke. Now, for example, you know, say you know, say my kwamba, uskofunzo na wazazi utafunzo na dunia, and we are living the world where there is so much evil. So, to detail it, to fundisho to try to build and build, to move on to build it. The Bible is there. Na tusiachie dunia iwa fundisha watoto yetu kwa sababu vitu ambavyo watafundishwa na dunia vitawapeleka mbali na Mwenyezi Mungu na tutajisikia kujuta kama hatutafanya nafasi yetu kile ambacho Mungu anatutarajia kufanya na the world will never teach our children the way we will teach them the world is like a hired hands and when they when they see what is coming they take off Practicals, how do we do it? As we teach them, we need to do a lot of education. You do it, you do it. Don't say, I'm tired. No, don't ever say that, I'm tired. These are gifts from God. You receive it with gratitude. God, thank you so much. And I'll never get tired of this gift yeah. from you. You know, we should regularly bring young people back to the truth, go back to the truth, go back to the truth, go back to the truth. Mm -hmm. Respect, teach children with respect as we share the true gospel with them. Not a watered down version, discuss the character of God, the reality of sin, the sufficiency of Christ and the eternity is really. Tell them the goodness of God. So to now I you know what, there is the end with a kufa, the end of hell. We, 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 God has many characters. Mm -hmm. He has many characters. He's so, Gracious, very loving, forgiving. Mm -hmm. But the sin is there. We teach them the consequence of the sin, mm -hmm. of sin. Mm -hmm. The sufficient of Christ. Christ is all we need, is the answer to all our challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, wisdom is God, knowing God is the source of wisdom. Those are things that they do. Eternity is real. You know, what is in eternity? Symbolism, be careful using symbolism. Use concrete and simple words that children can easily understand. Yeah. There are many symbolism in the book of uh, Revelation. Let's use simple language that can easily understand. Revelation, you know, get a score that they can understand. Because we are talking about different children here, there are those who can understand, that are young and all that. You know, get something simple that can easily understand. Choose what's called carefully. Mm -hmm. Use the same terms consistently. Make sure you are communicating in a way that they can understand. You know? Get the words very carefully, what we can tell them and all that. You know, avoid the difficult biblical words. So now, today I want us to talk about eschatology, yeah? Christology, hermeneutics. Ah, uh, you know, not that the children are finding one and they are very good. So let's get the simple words. Yeah. Those ones, on our size here, you know. okay, number five, questions. Ask questions, questions about what they are thinking and encourage them to ask questions. Make your home a safe place for them to feel comfortable asking questions. Mm. When it is comfortable, when it is safe, they will ask. You know, when they are disturbed, they are bored at school and all that, they will ask questions, what can I do with this and all that. Let's make our homes a safe place for children to feel comfortable. So I'm not even looking for that, you know. Over spirituality, I'm going over spiritualizing everything. This is when we try to look for spiritual meaning in everything. No, no. Some, some scriptures you read it and you leave it just like that. Mm. If you don't know the meaning, it does not mean that thing, you know. Not, there are things we just leave it. Sometimes we are not as spiritualized back and forth. You know, leave them the way they are. Mm -hmm. You know, don't uh, spiritualize everything as we teach them. Teach them, teach them individually. Yeah. Like now we have two children. My they are needs are different. So separating them and teaching them according to their needs. The character wise. Yeah. Yeah. They are not the same. They are mm -hmm. from the same father and mother. I think character and tough for the abuse. So sometimes teach them individually, sometimes teach them together. Yeah. Because 
we are with parents, we know them, avoid pressure, avoid pressuring with children to make a choice. Well, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. No, let them decide. Mm. Yeah? Let them decide. To know them, those of them that is only one of them, but it's let them make their decision. You are under my roof, go, oh, you need to do what I'm saying. I'm telling you. Be careful about offering assurance of salvation to make them feel better. Mm. Remember, it is not the best of doing something wrong, but of trusting the saving work of the cross for all our sons. Our children, no, sorry, our children are good manipulators. They have three faces: school, home, and where, and in the school bus. Sometimes they can appear so holy when we are with them. They can appear so good. But when you go to school, you hear this story. Ah, you know, you're quiet, you're quiet, you're quiet. So don't be contented by looking at them now. You are now self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are not looking on what they are doing good. Mm -hmm. Doing good does not mean the heart is right. Some of these children, we are with them, we take them to church on Sunday, and all that. we assume they are okay. They are lost. The good thing is just that they are lost in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. So let's take them to the cross to see that the cross is there to help us overcome our sins. That's why Christ came, emphasize their commitment and life change. Okay? Don't teach a work based salvation. Salvation is not, is not earned by working so hard, it's by God's grace. Be real with them. Be willing to be open and honest with them. Don't appear to be over spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, being disciples does not mean we are faultless. We are sinless. No, no, no. We should be share with them. You know, they should know that even me, I was, I fall here and there. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a book. There's a book I was reading with my son called "Preparing." Pre 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 prepare your son for every man's battle. That guy is sharing how he was talking with children, his sons, you know, the sins and all that. So let's talk to them. You know, we were not born disciples. We are not born only. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we were we, we had to repent and we keep on repenting. We keep on confessing our sins. So let's be very honest with them. Don't appear to be very spiritual. You come home, it's like, hey, but open your mother because the daddy and mom, they are so holy. You cannot play music here. You cannot do anything and all that. Be clear with them the cost of following the cost of following Jesus and take, taking discipleship seriously and the blessing of the following. To follow Jesus, you have to count costs, but there is also some blessings of me follow Christ. Yeah. yeah, you have to count costs, but at the same time, you have to take them blessings of following Christ. Make it short and interesting. Yeah. So you have to find in chapter one to Ten. Wow. No. Ten. No. We'll never see them again. Okay? Make it interesting. Whereby you cause them to learn. You I'm looking forward. Teach them the gospel. This is a quote from this guy, David Park. Clark. We teach our kids how to eat and drink, how to put on their clothes how to make their bed, how to do all kinds of things. Certainly teaching them the gospel is more important than all of those things put together. We hire people to help us. We take them to very good schools. We buy them expensive clothes and all that. Well, that's now when we grow in our responsibility. Okay, We make sure they eat very well. When they are sick, we take them to the hospital. We teach them how to take care of them or of themselves. Now, teaching them the gospel is more important than all these things. It's not that they are not important, but this one is more important. You see, it's like the story of uh, this guy who went to who met. Uh, yeah, teaching them to eat. To be neat and it is important, but mm. this one is more important according to their plan. Mm. Keys to a successful children ministry. Why do we say children ministry? Because uh, if I am a Bible talk leader, a sector leader, a church leader, that's a ministry. Mm. That's a ministry. Being a parent, I have another ministry at home. Mm. My children. Is my ministry number one. 
you know, it is my ministry number one. So how are we going to be successful in this ministry of children? Number one, see the value and the potential of every child as God sees them both in who they are now and who they may be in the future. Mm. We saw there, how does God do children? They are potential. Mm. They, are so potential. they are so special. Mm. This is will happen if we are intentional. These are, they are very potential. They are vulnerable potential. Now and in the years to come. We, we, what we are doing for now, we may not be able to do in the next 10 years to come. But these kids, we, the other day we were in Nairobi, I was so impressed when I saw uh, Chagomoro's son was recording. He was there up there in the, at Moja Church doing I don't know if it was, was for the only one. I was so impressed. This is the kind of things we need to be doing with our children. Mm. Have high expectations for them, you know. Pray for them and with them. Mm. Prayer, prayer with them. There's them here that we pray together and all that. Focus on the quality, not quantity. Mm. We are responsible to do the best with whatever and whatever God has entrusted us with. Okay, make disciples the priority. What are we commissioned by God to do? God has called us to go and make disciples. And we should start with our children, help them. It's not our job to change them. God definitely will change them so long as you believe them, will not give up. Focus on the most important things you want them to learn. The goal is not to get them to look moral and act moral. The goal is life change. Mm -hmm. So we must focus on the heart. Don't forget, I said our children are good manipulators. You know, they can manipulate when they are with us. They go to school, they see another face. They are in the school bus, these are another people. Let's don't be that more outside looking can be very, very deceiving. Let's focus on the heart. And because we don't know, we don't see the heart, we have to pray for God to expose whatever is there, which as far as we are supposed to teach them. Prayer, taking them to God, can just bring things out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Love should be the driving force. Even if they don't change, even if they say, you know what, it's not my time to make a decision. We need to love, no matter what. People, they change because they are loved, not mm -hmm. because of how many scriptures we show them. The, the prodigal son, he went, he messed up, he squandered all he took from his father. But when he came to his senses, he remembered what did he remember about all? Maybe love. He went back. Father, did not remind him, you know what? You took your things and you went. I don't want to see you. He loved you. Jesus loves us the way we are. Even if we go to church or not, wherever we are, Jesus loves us. And his love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Spend time with them. Anything we love, we have time for it. If we love our children, we have time. Make it exciting and interesting. Whereby they are looking forward to the next. Yeah, I'm going to hang out with my dad. They are looking forward. I'm mm. going to hang out with my mom. You know, there are times we can be with them and it's very boring, you know. And for this to be exciting, let's be in their world. Mm. Let's understand their culture as well. What is their culture? Sometimes my wife and I we come home, we we find these guys they have they have put a loud music. And we tell them, you know, guys, can you reduce the world? Mommy, we want to have vibes, you know. You loud, you feel like, ah, oh, what are we going to do? We need to understand their culture and all that. Teach appropriately what they are facing. What are, we need to know where they are, the relevant, you know. Where are they? Do I know where is my son is? The character wise, the struggles, weaknesses, and all that. Teach appropriately. Why it is not relevant. Teach appropriately mm -hmm. what you learn. Involve other parents. Mm -hmm. We have our friends in this forum. You know, let's allow them to hang out with our children as well. Yeah. Watch football with them. Go to salon with them. You know, go with your, watch your movie. Let's have a cup of have, have a cup of tea. Maybe it's a mover. Can you hang out with my son this coming Saturday? What are you doing and all that? We have great parents. They are good examples. Yeah. Let's 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 allow sleepovers. You know, because 
the good thing we know each other, we know our children and all that. So let's involve other parents. There are things that our children can tell us, there are things that sometimes that they feel like maybe I can talk to so and so, you know, and be organized and prepared. When we are organized and prepared, they know that, you know, we are valued. Mm -hmm. So let's be organized and prepared. They see, you know what? It, you know, they are prepared because it's very important. We are called to build into the lives of people and the greatest impact will come when we invest in our children because the days will come where we are seated where we'll be seated in our homes we are old and at that time we'll be proud of our children you know what george w bush when he was done with the uh, two terms of president of the united states of america one day was interviewed and was asked, tell us the most, your most important achievement. And he said that my most important achievement is still my children comes home. He was not like, I've been the president of the United States of America two times, two times. But my, the most important achievement is that my children still come home to see me to spend time with me. So the greatest impact will come when we invest in our children. Yeah, developing a relationship is not a one day thing. There's a lot as parents we need to learn and teach our children. So with God, with the Bible, God is going to help us to help them to develop a relationship with God. Thank you. To God be the Lord. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Joachim and Eva. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been an indeed amazing uh, class. Uh, learned a lot all together. Uh, one of the things that uh, for me I look and uh, take uh, home is the fact that uh, as uh, parents, uh, this is a responsibility that has been put on us. Uh, God has an expectation for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to like make sure that uh, we also live in accordance to that expectation, and especially when it comes to children. What I like that the way you put it out is uh, how God views children and how I view children as well. Uh, realizing that the way I view children, children will also determine how, how I'll be able to handle them and I'll be able to train them. Jesus and the way he looked at children, uh, the results he said, let them come to me, uh, was different. I mean, sometimes we look at our children and instead of embracing them in the same manner, we want to push them away. And in that way, we'll not be able to live with the expectation that God has uh, for us. But if I look at them with uh, God's eyes, uh, I'll be able to embrace them even much more. Uh, the fact that uh, it starts that tender age i think it helps a lot and i'm, I'm kind of like looking at, at especially for the men who have young children now it's, it's it's something to take advantage of because you start training them when they are younger mm -hmm. uh, like the what we have from timothy's side he was taught from infancy uh, these things uh, so it's it's good that we start at just that young age as we teach them about jesus and god so that as they grow with it, they're able to develop even deeper convictions about it. It becomes harder when they are older. Uh, so I like this because we are being trained on how we can be able to take advantage of where we are with our children mm -hmm. and uh, be able to train them earlier. Now, I'm not saying that uh, those who are older can now not be able to be trained. Mm -hmm. They can also be trained. They can also be helped. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is more like uh, what you said, the Bible is basically the standard. The older ones, we may feel like, well, I didn't begin when they were young, so I've missed on a good and an important aspect in their lives, but it is not late. Why? Because we have the manual, we have the Bible with us mm. to teach us. And as you say, the goal is the gospel. When they know this, then it will transform them. What am I looking at uh, the end result for these children? Uh, and so if I use what I have, 
it will really help a lot. And that is the Bible that we have. I like the community that we have as well, mm -hmm. because we all are here to help each other. Yeah. And so we can continue to encourage one another. How do you handle this age group? How do you handle this age group mm -hmm. and this other age group and train them to, be, to become godly or to have a great relationship with God? Uh, thank you so much. I like also the practicals on how we can be able to bring all this about. Uh, and I pray that uh, it, it will be something that uh, we'll all be able to embrace and uh, make the effort to see that we also uh, led our children uh, at the right path. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much, Palangios. Really, we are so inspired by the lesson today. I really thank you for putting so much emphasis on what you are supposed to be teaching, and uh, that is God's word. A very sobering question you've asked is, what would I want my children to remember me for? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know for me, I just want them to remember as much as there are many memories and many things that they, they can actually say, dad taught me God's word. Mom taught me God's word because that's the best thing I can give to my children. And uh, I know even as ever you've shared, if I don't teach them, the world will teach them. And of course, the world is harsh, it's cruel, it's, it's not going to go well. And so I really just uh, appreciate that and that I must be very intentional. I know I'm thinking of uh, my little boy. It's, it's fun reading with him, but then it's fun when I've really planned for it, you know? And so I'm thinking I have to be intentional if I'm going to teach God's word to my children. I like the way you say that uh, it, it's God who does the changing. And I know at times as parents, we teach with an expectation to see change, but to realize that actually that is God's work. My work is just to simply teach the children. And so I'm very, very grateful. I feel very inspired, even what Joachim you're sharing, what you're doing with your son, praying with him early in the morning. Really, that is very inspiring. Thank you so, so very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was really a great class. We really learned a lot, and I believe many also have been able to learn a lot uh, with the same. And I like that we can all be able to appreciate and, and uh, just uh, give them uh, a round of applause for what they have done. Uh, but also, I would like to call upon our evangelist, uh, Michael Dolo, would like to say something about this as well. But it, it's just been a great and, and a wonderful class of together. Mike, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. Uh, this has uh, been uh, quite, quite a class. I want to appreciate uh, the Palangios and uh, just uh, the fact that uh, they've really taken us deep into this. You know, our children having uh, a relationship with God is the best thing that we can do as parents, mm -hmm. yet it is also the most challenging thing. So I know in this forum, we have uh, kind of two groups. We have those who have younger children, who I, I always say are the greatest beneficiaries, but we also have those who have older children. And I like uh, what you said, and Sami has also really emphasized the fact that it is not time to give up on them. Uh, you know, the passage you read about uh, you know, in, in the book of Psalms that uh, you know, we the word of God is is the lamp to the mm. to 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 us to our children, mm. and it is so powerful. It is able to change and to transform the heart. Mm. And so, even for us who have older children, it is time uh, for us to just continue applying. You know, one thing I was realizing, even for me, when our children were younger, the devotionals were very uh, uh, consistent. But as they grow older, then we we tend to lack on on the devotionals. Mm -hmm. Yet I'm just realizing that this, this is the time that now we even need to do those devotionals even the more, because they are already starting to face the world, and the world is bombarding them with so many things, mm -hmm. and so we cannot uh, let loose uh, the pedal on uh, just the word of God, and so we need to just continue, continue, uh, you know. Uh, just talking the word of God. You know, there is something you say that caught my attention that, uh, you know, uh, our children uh, are lost. They are lost in church. 
just as people are lost in the world, but the only difference is that they are lost in a safe environment. I think that is so profound, mm -hmm. so that, man, we've got to strive to help our children, you know, uh, and got to realize that they could even be coming to church, but they are still lost. So it is until we continue to apply the Bible more and more, will we find them? Mm -hmm. So the question is, are we going to find our children or are they now going to get lost and get lost in the world? So those of us, uh, I know the many of us, our children are in the age of being disciples, but they, they are not yet disciples we cannot give up. We just need to continue praying and praying. Mm -hmm. You know, the story of that prodigal son, this guy was such a rebel. He got lost and he left. Mm -hmm. But the dad, I believe, kept on praying mm -hmm. and kept on praying. And God changed this guy's heart. Nobody studied the Bible with him. Mm -hmm. But out there, no, he came to his senses and he came back home. Isn't that what we'd want for our children? Mm -hmm. That even though they are looking like they are straying, but because we are begging God for them, we are praying for them. When we have time, we are sharing with them the word of God. We are writing those messages to them and just telling them, man, you know, you are still the best. We still love you. We still want you to have a great relationship with God. Who knows? Just at the right time, they will come back to their senses and they will head back home. So that is, for me, very, very encouraging. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Eva and Joachim. And uh, I also want to take this opportunity to thank all those who've uh, come before us to just uh, be able to share. It's just amazing what we have in the kingdom. So as uh, one of the parents who has young children, I'm really delighted. Uh, with the, the learning <laughs> that is taking place and the, what I'm, I'm, I'm rediscovering that, uh, that uh, I didn't know or I, I assumed. Uh, so I'm, I'm truly grateful and uh, knowing that uh, it's, I have a, a big role to play, uh, not only in terms of just teaching my children different things, but also spiritual matters. Uh, thank you so much for mm -hmm. this. And I can't wait for more and more to be unlocked as we continue this journey of parenting. I am I'm, I'm delighted. I, I feel like I'm not alone in this journey. Uh, thank you so much for this. Uh, let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, we come before you with our hearts full of gratitude. We thank you, Father, for what you've blessed us in the kingdom uh, with wonderful uh, teachers here who you've set aside uh, who you know even put aside their time to just prepare to to nourish us through what you've put in their heart father we cannot take this for granted and uh, we are grateful that uh, we, you can afford us this opportunity to just get to learn how best we can raise our children uh, under your guidance so that even as they grow uh, they'll be able to have gotten the, 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 the training that they need uh, so that they are not able to depart from it. Thank you so much uh, uh, for the many whom uh, you've uh, appointed in the past and uh, even in the future to be able to take us through the different areas. We are grateful for just opening their minds and uh, just giving them the knowledge. It's like, Father, they know exactly what we need to hear. And uh, truly, we can't take this for granted. At this moment, we also want to commit... Uh, uh, Uganda before you, Kampala Church, even as they launch the Barara Church on Sunday. Father, we know there are still issues here and there concerning Ebola and so on and so forth. But we know you are in control of everything. You are truly in charge. It's you who have guided them this far. And we are grateful for the partnership that we have. And so we pray and commit them into your able hands, even as we look forward to this great occasion. We can't forget what you did in March. And we are looking forward to what you're going to do this coming Sunday for your own glory. Father, we want to ask for your blessings. We want to ask for your guidance and your protection in all this. For journey masses, uh, for financial support, uh, and in many other ways, Father, so that your name will be glorified at this coming Sunday, even as we get to look forward to the launch of your church in Barara. We are also grateful for the parents who are here, Father, 
uh, even those who are, who are not able to make it, wherever they are, we are grateful for technology that these things can be recorded for your, for our reference, God Father. We pray that you continue granting us with wisdom uh, so that we can raise our kids uh, in a godly way for your own glory. Thank you so much for everything. We thank you for the for the leadership and for just putting in place all these things. Uh, we are indeed blessed courtesy of all this and that we don't want to take this for granted. And that we want to thank you so much for just uh, for them and being able to organize all this. Thank you so much for the evening. Lord, we pray that you grant us a good night's sleep and that give us a great day tomorrow, even as we continue uh, looking forward to Sunday. Uh, joining together with the with the with the with the Barara Church, uh, uh, so that we can be able to be part of this great occasion. And all glory will come back to you. Thank you so much for our children. Continue, Father, uh, raising them through us, God Father, that they'll be able to know you, that they'll be able to have a relationship with you, and uh, even when they get to the right age and develop right convictions, they'll be able to say, "I do," even as they start and continue this journey of uh, walking with you. Thank you so much for everything. We love you. I pray this in Jesus' name.